Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. Good morning. This is Bowtie Dave, Bowtie Life. Please subscribe if you're just stumbling along finding us here. Uh, we talk mostly about gardening, sometimes about life. And I had a moment of nostalgia this morning. And it really dated back to the beginning of my education in gardening. Before, about four years ago, my experience with gardening was not that great. And, uh, yeah, I had a lot to learn. And I went to YouTube to learn. And one of the first channels I found, and maybe even the first channel I found, was Roots and Refuge. Jess Sowards and her, her husband, Maya. She was actually in the greenhouse on their old property, for those of you who know uh, Roots and Refuge. Not the... Not the uh, window greenhouse, the original greenhouse, the little tiny place. And uh, she was oof, <laughs> not spilling soil like this. She was up potting tomato seeds. So, <laughs> and the reason why it's so important to me is because a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, had just given me a tomato plant. My first tomato plant here in Florida. And he just kind of gave it to me out of the blue and said, here, grow this. And I, I thought, okay, I will. And in fact, if I, if I can go back and find a video or a photo of that first plant, maybe I'll try to put it in right here. But yeah, I, uh, I had this first tomato plant and I grew it from a seedling. And uh, I was like, well, what do I do with this? Uh, and I, I had grown a few tomato plants. In fact, we had had an experience up at our cabin in Arkansas. Some of you may have seen a video from there. And you can see here, look how beautiful that is. That thing is so ready. This is an Everglades tomato. I was just watching I was just watching uh, Scott Head's 200,000 subscriber live uh, replay, and uh, he was celebrating 200,000 subscribers, and he mentioned uh, Everglades tomatoes, and I thought, oh, I'm being told right now I need to go up pot those Everglades tomatoes. These guys are hardened off. They've been up in, oh, it smells so good. They have been on the north side of the house, in the shade mostly. They get a little morning sun, a little evening sun. But uh, they are ready to go. And uh, what I'm doing here is, and, and, and you saw the roots on that one here. Let me pull out another one here. Now, this is a much smaller one. I better be careful with this one. And in fact, I lost half the roots, but you can see... I have the have the dirt ball, but you can see roots are searching there for more ground. And uh, as soon as these start, they start off with two leaves, two real plain looking leaves. And those are the cotyledon leaves. Cotyledon leaves are actually part of the seed. They're like, think of this, you know, the, the space station when it first got up there, it put out those first solar panels and it operated off the power generated by those solar panels until it could get more. Well, that's exactly what these plants are doing. They're operating off of their initial solar panels so that they can get more power and make more leaves. First thing they do is they start making more leaves. And so I've got three here that are by themselves that I'm focusing on first. Um, but... Anyway, as soon as they start coming out with what they call the truly, in fact, here's a really good example. Let me pull this one out because this is an excellent example. You can see here, these first leaves right here are the cotyledon leaves. They're kind of plain looking leaves. And then they start coming out with true leaves. 
And these true leaves are what makes the power of the tomato plant. That's the powerhouse. It makes this thing actually grow and start getting tall and then start building fruit. It needs these leaves. And so I just pulled this one out of the little seed starter tray. And, and this is this is pretty good point at which to up, up, up pot it to a solo cup. I'm putting them in a solo cup because they're going to take off a little faster. They need a little more room. In fact, you can see those roots right there. They are asking for more room. They're asking for it. And, they, and you can tell because they're pushing up against the side. They're stretching out. Could have gone a little more down. Didn't go down very much because I actually left a little bit of the dirt ball down in there. But this cup, you'll notice this cup is significantly larger. And I'm also, you'll notice that I'm burying these things kind of deep. And tomatoes actually can grow roots all along their stem. And now these are looking pretty healthy, but they're a little tall here in the, in the bottom. So you can bury, to now tomatoes are kind of unique. There's a few plants that do this, but tomatoes especially, um, not peppers. <laughs> if you saw my previous video, uh, you know it doesn't work on peppers. But you'll see here, I buried it all the way up, to, almost up to those cotyledon leaves. I could have buried it a little deeper, but that's all I could get in there. It's not rocket science. Don't make it rocket science. It's it's fine. But anyway, so back to where I started from here. Um, I was wanting to find out what do I do with this tomato now that a, fr that a friend has given me. And I stumbled onto Roots and Refuge and Jess, in the original greenhouse, the little tiny one, uh, with the little wire tables. Well, all of them had, both of them had wire tables at the original property. But, hang on, I gotta go. Okay, got a bucket of water here, because I'm gonna need it. But, anyway, it just so happened I found the first of three videos, and, and these were like three of the very first videos I watched on YouTube. And let me tell you something, the YouTube algorithm got it right that day and uh, showed me the first three videos that got me started on this journey. In fact, I'm gonna do another video of slideshow of some of my uh, garden in those days uh, here eventually. I have plans for it. But, uh, and you know, I'm picking up by the stems. You really should not pick up by the stems. But you'll notice we've got two here, and that's okay. Tomatoes are pretty, uh, they don't mind their uh, toes being played with. Some people mind, other people don't. Uh, and that's okay, uh, to each his own. And uh, so what I'm doing here to get these separated, and these two are kind of far apart, but to get these separated, I'm gonna put these two plants in this water, the root ball, well, the plant fell in. Uh, and I don't remember if it was Jess that showed this or if it was somewhere else. Um, but, uh, you can separate these two plants. I haven't pulled apart at all. Okay, so I'm about to, so all the dirt is out. Notice, all the dirt is out of the root, or not all the dirt, but almost all. And soaking it in water like this kind of rinses off the roots. And now I can kind of pull them apart gently. And there is two good root balls. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I, I'm, you'll notice I'm doing my whole hand down in here. I'm making kind of a wide slot in the dirt here. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see I'm, I use my whole hand and I'm gonna spread these roots out in that whole slot. And, and this is not, again, it's not rocket science. I'm gonna, you know, you can see I'm kind of spreading them out here, sticking them down in there just so that plant now I'm actually, ooh, gonna be able to bury this one just above the cotyledon leaves. So I'm gonna actually pinch off these cotyledon leaves, those first two plain looking leaves. And I'm gonna plant this thing as deep as I can in this dirt. Now there are other things in this dirt too, which I'm gonna have to pull out. Uh, in fact, uh, this dirt is recycled. Um, I'm sitting here thinking, maybe I shouldn't have recycled all this, but I did. <laughs> and it's gonna be fine. It's got some uh, used potting soil in it. As you can see, it has uh, uh, other stuff in it. 
that I'm pulling out. Other plants, complete other plants, you can see there. <laughs> um, I know what they are, they're weeds. But anyway, okay, so I'm supposed to be holding these by the leaves, not by the stem. I am holding this stem very, very gingerly. Uh, you do not want to squeeze or break that stem. Once you do that, if you pull off a leaf, uh, it'll grow another leaf. If you bust the stem, um, it may not come back. So you gotta be mindful of that uh, as you're doing this. So anyway, back to the story, which this is, this is kind of hard to tell a story while I'm doing plants. Anyway, so yeah, um, YouTube got the algorithm right that day and it showed me three videos in a row that got me started, three of them. And if you go to the, uh, to the Bowtie Life page on YouTube, you can see a playlist with three Just Sowards videos. And those are the three in the order that got me started <laughs> on how to grow tomatoes. And we were in that apartment back then. And again, I'll show, show that. But I learned so much from those three little videos. And I have frequently gone back and re-educated myself on those three videos uh, with those three videos to make sure I've got everything right. And so far, so good. Uh, yeah, I mean, what a humble start, a humble beginning. Uh, but um, I've been using that information for four years now. This is my fourth year. And uh, I am just so thankful for YouTube and the people I've learned from over the years and and uh, whew, I just broke a stem. Doggone it. I see. I did it. I'm going to have to pull that stem. Uh, but uh, I still got, still got another one here. So anyway, uh, so today I was watching the uh, 200,000 subscriber celebration from Scott Head. And he mentioned these Everglade tomatoes. And I thought, well, there's my message. I need to up pot these and... Uh, I hate to do stuff and not share it. You know, some some people talk about, that, that are YouTubers, talk about uh, trying to find things to record. And I'll be honest, I, I'm trying to find things to not record because I'm excited about all this, all of this. This is the neatest thing. And people, let me tell you something. You want to feel like you're on your way to self-sufficiency, grow yourself a garden, grow your own food, uh, experience what it's like to watch God's creation develop before you. And <laughs> Gardener Scott has a, um, I think it's on his water, his red watering can that says, no, no, somewhere it says um, to plant a seed is to believe in hope. That's not what it is. Something like that. You know, you can't plant a seed and see a garden grow and not have hope. Uh, it's, it's what it's all about. And um, we watch what... Okay, that one didn't come out too well, but we're going to plant it. You know, when God created this world, he created a system to feed us, to sustain us, and make us live and thrive. So these things really want to grow. And it's just a matter of harnessing and doing it. And, and here's the thing. Hey, I did it years and years ago. I had one successful year of tomato gardening, and then it went south. My second year of tomato gardening, uh, we had three cherry tomato plants three of them, and they grew big. I had one cherry tomato off the whole thing, and I didn't have a clue why. Not a clue. And uh, I do know now um, there were two factors. Number one, there was heat. Uh, three factors. Heat, too much sun, and the soil was depleted because I didn't supplement it from the previous year. Uh, so, yeah. Had I known, I could have moved the tomatoes to a better place. I could have fed the soil. <clears throat> and I could have given it some shade cloth, maybe. 
So it was out on a very hot deck up in Arkansas. Ooh, that worm just jumped out of there. My goodness. Yeah, there's worms in here. Worms have never bothered me. People say the worms eat their roots of their plants. I've never had that experience, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, never. Anyway, well, ah! <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that was an earwig. Ah, some, some bugs give me a little bit of creepiness. Uh, I really don't like spiders. I, I, I confess, when it comes to spiders, Mrs. Bowtie has to come save me. Uh, I can handle some in the garden, and occasionally you'll see me deal with a spider in the garden and, and let it live. I, I try to let them live, but I, I'm not crazy about spiders. Yeah, sorry. Those of you who, well, and, and again, I do let them live, but uh, I have to do better on that front. So, yeah, just, you know, the battle here is not with Mother Nature. The battle here is not with seeds. The battle here is just with yourself. Get out there and try it. And here's the thing. When you start, know that you're going to have failures. I mean, look at last year. How many failures did I have out in this garden last year? There were a lot. Go back and watch the garden tours for last year. Failures up one side, down the other. And uh, some things took and some things didn't. Uh, we had the rat invasion. We had, uh, um, what else did we have? We had the Kajari, uh, not the Kajari, the uh, Kiwano uh, um, debacle. <laughs> I'm trying to come up with names for these events. Uh, the Ki Kiwano debacle, I guess. Um, that was, uh, peculiar. Uh, we had so many failures. Go into this knowing there's going to be failures and be okay with it. A failure isn't a bad thing. A failure is a lesson learned. And I know several, uh, YouTubers, that, <laughs> they talk about that all the time. Lessons learned. You got Gardener Scott, I think is the, probably the most prolific of those people. Uh, I know I've heard Just Sowards and, and, uh, it's over at Stivers, all of them. Um, they have learned so many lessons and I'm learning lessons and that's why I'm here because I want to share the stupid mistakes that I make and maybe the, some of the successes. Uh, so you can learn from my mistakes, learn from my successes. And if you are of the mind to, to share your experiences, please do. And, uh, let me know, uh, comment in the comments below in this video. As I already said, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Uh, all subscriptions help. The comments help. Um, and, and if you have subscribed and you're coming back watching for the for another video, um, look at there. Isn't that beautiful? Ready to go. I'm going to go water these in. But, you know, if, if uh, um, you, you've come back, your subscription, I am so thankful for it. I appreciate it. And if, if you uh, found this informational, educational, or uh, entertaining... Please click the thumbs up or like button and uh, it, and share with your friends on uh, your social media pages like, uh, you know, Facebook and whatnot. But uh, anyway, yeah. So we have, uh, well, now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine Everglades tomatoes that will hopefully stand up to our heat down here. Uh, I bought these from Dave the Good over at the uh, Milton, uh, over at the homesteaders meet up over in Milton last year and I'm very excited to see these grow I had great germination too uh Dave the good if you're watching you're awesome I think it was was it your son that uh sold me those seeds I can't remember they hand drew on the envelope it's very neat I thought it was very cool but uh I will definitely look out for Dave the good in the future um but yeah there's nine tomato plants and I probably won't plant all these out unless I have another big failure you, it happens, um, but uh, uh, there we go. I'm going to water these in. I have some uh, um, water in my green watering can. It has a little bit of uh, plant food, soluble plant food in it that, I'm, that will be added to this uh, just because it's there. There's not much, just probably just enough for these little seedlings. 
And uh, these things will be set. I'm going to put them back out on the north side of the house where they get uh, morning sun and afternoon sun. They get a little more sun every single day because the sun's getting higher and higher. Here we are in uh, April, middle of April. Where's the year gone? Uh, but these will be going out there next to, some of these will be going out there next to the garlic that's in bed number three. So go watch uh, one of the raised garden bed tours to see what that looks like. I hope this inspires somebody. I was inspired by somebody and I, I just hope it inspires somebody to get out there and try planting just a single tomato plant in a pot. You can do it. I planted mine in a five gallon bucket from Ace Hardware. Very well could have been this very bucket right here because look at the bottom, there's holes in the bottom. One of these, I have a bunch of them because <laughs> I had 20 some odd buckets at one point. And uh, I'll, I'll go back and do a slideshow of, the, of those days. But yeah, you don't have to have a big property to do this. You can start with a bucket, just a bucket you know, a three, four dollar bucket at Ace Hardware. I don't remember how much it is, but it's not very much. So have a blessed day.